Well, hello, families. Hello, littles. How are you doing? It is a little cooler today, but it's still very warm. So I do have my fans on and I have my water to spray all over me to keep me cool. You may see me doing this during our book just so that I can feel a little bit refreshed because it is very hot still. Well, today we do have a very sweet book to read. It is the little red hen. And look at this little red hen. She has a hat and a coat on. Do hens wear hats and coats? No, but the illustrator has an imagination. And that illustrator, who is hmm, J.P. Miller, decided to draw the hen with some clothes. If you want to make a book, you can decide to put clothes on your creatures that you decide to include in your story, or you can make it however you want. And so we're gonna get to read this cute little book in just a moment. But before we do, I wanted to share with you, uh oh, oh, here it is, uh, my feather. Look at this beautifully long feather. It's bigger than my head. It's almost as long as my torso. It's as long as my forearm. Hmm. It's as wide as my shoulders. This is a feather from a specific kind of bird. Do you know which bird this is from? We see them in Venetia sometimes. They're popular during our Thanksgiving season. This feather came from a turkey. This is a turkey's feather. Look at how long. Now this is from a friend of mine and they brought this to me because they know how much I love feathers and I love how feathers feel. How you can push the little parts of each individual strand and push them together just like a zipper. Now this is how people invented the zipper. So if you tear it apart, you can run your fingers across it and it zips right up. And then it's nice and smooth. I think that's fascinating, don't you? How creatures and animals have things that allow them to live in our world. And they use these feathers for flight. And in order for them to fly, they need to have bones and feathers that are very light. And you can see, hmm, you can almost see through this quill, the end part of this feather. It's hollow and it is extremely strong. Someday, maybe we will build with straws, just like Joshua did. If you saw the video where I showed you his bridge, he made a bridge out of straws something that is hollow can be very strong when it's put into a specific shape. And in this shape right here, this happens to be very sturdy for this bird's feather to help propel it and fly into the air. Birds are fantastic creatures and I love them very much. And I absolutely love this feather. And I have it sitting on my dresser next to one of my plants. So, thank you for this. Mm -hmm. Now, let's start our story. It's called, ooh, we forgot, or at least I did, lavender and candle. You have to make sure we do our ritual, right? Oh, and I'm doing it out of order. My brain must be very warm right now, because for some reason I forgot the order. So, first our lavender. Mm. Have you found your scent yet? Mm. Mm. Have you done yoga today? Have you eaten food that is healthy for you today? Mm. Remember to take your deep breaths. Ready? Inhale. Exhale. Lovely. Now, candle time. Mm -hmm. 
hopefully the fan won't blow it out this time. Oh, it did. Well, we'll put our candle right here so you can see, and we'll read our book. The Little Red Hen, a little golden book. It's classic. Classic means it's been around for quite some time and it's been loved by many people. One summer day, the little red hen found a grain of wheat. A grain of wheat, said the little red hen to herself. I will plant it. So, see the little red hen? And here is a field. It looks like there's corn. And here is a scarecrow. <laughs> there's a crow on the scarecrow. And here is the little red hen planting her grains. She asked the duck, will you help me plant this grain of wheat? Not I, said the duck. She asked the goose, will you help me plant this grain of wheat? Not I, said the goose. Mm. So there she is asking for help. <laughs> the duck has a hat that's made out of newspapers. I love that. And the goose has a hat that is a little pot that you would cook with. She asked the cat, will you help me plant this grain of wheat? Not I, said the cat. She asked the pig, will you help me plant this grain of wheat? Not I, said the pig. So here's the cat and the cat is fishing and playing against the tree, perhaps a little too busy to be planting. And here is the pig eating a snack and playing the fiddle or violin. Oh, also has a flute or a lute. Then I will plant it myself, said the little red hen. And she did. Soon the wheat grew tall and the little red hen knew it was time to reap it. Who will help me reap the wheat, she asked. So reaping means to harvest or to use something that is very sharp. It's like a curved, curved uh, knife, but it's very large with a long handle. And you would swing it at the base of the wheat and then it would cut it, and then that's how you would harvest it, by gathering up the wheat. Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the goose. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the pig. Then I will reap it myself, said the little red hen, and she did. So it looked like they were all too busy to help her harvest the wheat. Hmm. She reaped the wheat and it was ready to be taken to the mill and made into flour. Who will help me carry the wheat to the mill? She asked. Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the goose. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the pig. Then I will carry it myself, said the little red hen. And she did. She carried the wheat to the mill and the miller made it into flour. Mm. When she got it home, she asked, who will help me make the flour into dough? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the goose. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the pig. Then I will make the dough myself, she said. And the little red hen, she did. She made it and soon the bread was ready to go into the oven. Who will help me bake the bread, said the little red hen. Now all of them are watching her, but they are not helping. Hmm. Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the goose. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the pig. Hmm. Then I will bake it myself, said the little red hen, and she did. And after the loaf had been taken from the oven, it was set on the windowsill to cool. And now, said the little hen, who will help me eat the bread? I will, said the duck. I 
will, said the goose. I will, said the cat. I will, said the pig. No, I will eat it myself, said the little red hen. And she did. Hmm. And now she's going to sleep. So perhaps, wait, bum, bum. So perhaps if the little red hen had received some help from some of her friends, she would have wanted to share her bread with them. And if they had been kind enough to offer, perhaps she would have wanted to do it by herself and perhaps she would have wanted their help. It's always kind to offer a hand to somebody who may need it. And if someone's off asking for your help, if it's a possibility for you to do so, then it would always be kind to then also lend a hand to someone who needs help. If someone's asking for something that would do something that would harm you, or that you aren't physically able to do, or if for some reason they're asking something that you know your mom or dad or someone you love would not want you to do, it's okay to say no thank you. And it's okay to say, I'm busy right now, maybe later. So you can use your words and you can still be kind and we can help one another, but always make sure it's safe for you to do so, okay? I hope you enjoyed this book and I hope you're staying cool on this warm day. I love you all. Mwah.